You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. I'm grateful and energized to be here with you. And honestly, grateful for the downturn um, as we work three times as hard uh, to make sure that we are still delivering for our members and giving them more and more and more. Um, because right now, your success is going to be a factor of two things. Number one, how much are you willing to learn? And number two, how hard are you willing to work? And frankly, Rob, I have to say that I'm kind of jealous of a lot of these people who can't go to work. Because, gosh, there's so many things that I could be doing mm. working on myself right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's been exhausting, you know, being in and out of the office as much as, uh, as, uh, as we have. I know I'm preaching the choir, too, because you're here more than I am. But um, that being said, uh, you know, while I am jealous that a lot of you have your free time right now um, to work on your business, do what you want, a lot of people, you know, on the other side of the aisle are upset that they can't go out and go work for whatever reason. Look, uh, you know, it's all a matter of perspective. There's so much opportunity and I wish I had that time that you have. So just remember that whatever state of mind you're in during the virus, uh, just remember that uh, perception is everything. And if you can change your own perception, then the outcomes uh, I think you'll find are gonna be much better. But anyway, grateful to be here with you, Rob. Yeah, me too. Thanks, I uh, always look forward to being here at this desk doing these podcasts. And yeah, I would just uh, second what you said. I think it's an opportunity to absolutely redeem the time. And, and that does not mean simply it, from a business standpoint, um, but definitely from a learning standpoint, from a family standpoint. I mean, obviously the scenario that we find ourselves in is, is awful. Uh, nobody would wish this on their enemy, I, I hope. And yet here we are having time with our family, for example, that frankly we would not have had otherwise. So we are trying to make the most of it. I know you all are as well. And hopefully part of that uh, formula of making the most of it includes um, improving yourself in whatever ways you feel you need to, whether it's uh, personal improvements or your drone business or just sort of getting a handle on finances. I know there are a lot of people that are having to work on that for obvious reasons. We are. I mean, we're taking a look at things very, very uh, closely as far as finances are concerned. And it's just really causing everybody, including us, to refocus and uh, take a hard look at things and make the most of what we are going to call an opportunity. So excited to get into this because it's uh, one way that uh, people who are working on some mapping can get a little bit more information as to how to do that better. Yeah, actually, I'm excited uh, for today's question. And I can't remember if we had talked about... Uh, computers and mapping equipment previously, but if we did, we should take that show down and replace it with this. Um, but I'm excited for today's question. Um, talking about equipment specific to computers that you should be using. Um, and as many realtors, commercial and residential, are getting into drone mapping so that they can bring clients uh, to show homes in a time when they can't get clients to go to the homes, I think this is a really cool opportunity to utilize the information from the mapping webinar that Matt Schaefer from Utah, Drone U Elite Instructor, had put together uh, for a webinar. And I got to say, I've learned a lot from Matt, and I've learned a lot even from this webinar. And I think that this particular show, if you're watching on YouTube, will be great because I'm going to use some of the slides that Matt created to kind of go over some of the points of the question uh, from today's question asker, just really focusing on uh, the different options that are available. So I think this is going to be a really good show as far as information, um, and I'm excited to get into it. So let's just go ahead and, and dive right in to today's question, which is actually brought to you by... That's right, drone you. Um, so really quick, we've got a series of webinars coming up and we've got a series of live classes. We're gonna be doing the public safety class again. I went out and got some more data sets so that we can actually do more exercises in person. I'm really excited about that. We're also gonna be doing the live in-person mapping class again. And instead of trying to fit it into three days like we do in person, we're just going to four days. So uh, we're also gonna be offering a new schedule to try to help out more of the East Coast people. So look out for that. But we're also gonna be offering a 
couple other classes, one of them advanced aerial videography. And you may see a bunch of webinars. We just scheduled, I want to say like five or six webinars over the next two weeks. Some of them are members only. Most of them, though, are for everybody. So check them out. Um, just to be honest, all of these webinars are going to provide very real tips, tricks, and nuanced value that you can learn that you can actually do something with. Okay. But I also want to say that at the end of these webinars, there are discounts to things like these in-person live online classes, like I'm talking about, I shouldn't say in person, but these live online classes, there are discounts to those at the end of the webinars. In addition, we're offering discounts to membership. And I know Hoel is right now working on putting that public safety class uh, in membership. Now, remember, this is a very basic bare bones public safety class. This is only about search and rescue, situational awareness, that's it. Um, it is about nine hours of content and it will help anyone in public safety learn how to use apps to autonomously find people and apps to make hyper fast, rapid ortho mosaic construction. And it's not just PIX4D React. Just to be clear, we do talk about drone deploy and we have been teaching on drone deploy inside of the mapping bootcamp because there are real features inside a drone deploy that PIX4D simply doesn't have that really aids in developing a program or scaling your program. Um, and we talk about that and we talk about when you want to use certain mapping engines for certain deliverables. And again, right, drone you is all about teaching you practical information. So at the end of it all, we do a deliverables course where we talk about, okay, if you're doing this deliverable for construction, consider using X program. If you're doing, you know, VFX and 3D modeling, consider using this program. So just to clarify, because a lot of people have been like, Drone U only teaches on PIX4D. Um, that is not true. Okay. Um, but we do love PIX4D. Pretty, yeah. Pretty cool people. They've proven themselves. So uh, actually, I'll be talking to Ongood later today. So I'll have to throw in a Drone Gandhi joke at least once. <laughs> so anyway, um, but uh, I'm excited for that. And also, if you go to our website and you go to Drone U and you go to training and you click training events, you're going to get to this page right here. And it'll actually have all of our live classes that are coming up. We haven't added our new live telecast classes to this page, but they will be added. So you can check those out there. But also there's a link in the description below. So if they're not there, you know where to go to find all of this information. And uh, I think it will help you out a lot. But Rob, let's get into the question. And thank you everyone who has already supported us. Thank you to everyone who's written a review. Um, that is again, social currency in itself. So thank you. Hi guys, this is Scott Anderson from Davenport, Iowa. The Drone U website and your podcast have been a tremendous help in getting my drone business started. Thank you so much for the work you do. My question is about computers you use for post-processing. I'm a commercial real estate appraiser, so naturally I gravitated to doing real estate related work. I want to get into mapping and similar applications and the required software looks like it needs some pretty hefty computer horsepower to process it. What would you guys recommend for computer specs to process the images we gather with the drones? Thank you, Scott. Uh, great question. And I think you're going to love what Paul goes into here as far as some of the details. And thank you again to our friend, Matt Schaefer, who put this presentation together. I don't think you're going to go through the whole thing, but certainly pull out some pieces. But we appreciate the question. AskDroneU.com. If you've got a question like Scott does, if you kind of want to maybe just take his question and go a little deeper in a particular area or whatever. Again, we know that if you have a question, so do a lot of other people. So don't hesitate. But uh, there's actually quite a bit to get into here, and there are questions, for example, should I build a desktop? Should I just buy a laptop? Uh, like the one that you're working on now, for example, is one that we bought to do mapping in the classes and so forth. So yeah, what do you have to say to Scott? All right. Well, let's go ahead and get in this really fast. Here is our fun presentation. Again, thank you to Matt Schaefer, uh, Elevation Imaging, Drone U Elite Instructor. 
Um, but anyway, let's break this down really quick. Okay, computers have some pretty basic components, and I think it's really important to understand how these components work together, the relationships from one component to the other, to really understand the effect that it's going to have on your ability to actually uh, map at scale. Now, what do I mean by map at scale? Let's set the definitions right here. Mapping at scale means you're mapping three to five sites per week. This means that you need to process at a decent speed to actually be able to keep up with your workload. Now, this particular presentation does not go over how to create ultimate scalability, like building home networks or office networks and whatnot. But what we are going to talk about is how the a certain type of computer and the relationships are going to create the most efficient systems possible to really allow drone mappers or mappers in general to really scale quickly. Mm -hmm. So really quick, just to set the stage, every computer has a CPU, a motherboard, some type of cooling, RAM, GPU, storage, power, and, uh, and other things. So one of the things that, uh, that is really important that I actually learned from Matt is that clock speed is really not as important as how many cores you have. Hmm. Now, previously, we knew that, you know, uh, Pix4D was really only working well up to 12 cores. Word on the street is it's now, I and, and I need to correct my, my previous uh, uh, information, but it's now 18, supposedly. So... Which is a very expensive machine. Very expensive machine. If you're getting into that many cores. Yes, it but is. But nonetheless. Yes. Um, now, that being said, uh, Matt said that Intel usually provides better single-threaded performance, but you don't have to stick with Intel NVIDIA. You know, you can go with AMD if you prefer. And in fact, it's actually quite clear that the AMD series of products is significantly cheaper than Intel. And in fact, when watching or re-watching the webinar that Matt did on, you know, uh, computer equipment for mapping, he did a really good job of explaining if you want to buy a machine Machine, the you know low entry level, mid level, spend as much as you can, uh, and I'll show it here. It's fascinating how much money you can save building it yourself. Now I will say this: I have not built computers before myself, but in watching Jason do it, and watching Matt do it, and watching other people do it, it looks a whole lot easier than building a drone. So I would say I think with some good education, it would probably be pretty easy to build a computer. So, Agreed. that being said, the most important part of the entire computer is your motherboard. And it's also important to know that cheaper motherboards, long and the short of it, have cheaper, as Matt said, VRMs, which is voltage regulator modules. Um, now, Matt did make a point that the motherboard should have more or as many M.2 uh, slots or SATA ports so that you can, you know, constantly expand your storage, which if you're into drone mapping, you know how important that is. So um, that being said, you know, he talks also a lot about the different um, cooling solutions that you can have in your computer. I will just say one thing really quick about cooling your computer because I moved the mapping machine into my home office so I could work at it at the butt crack of dawn and or at 2 a.m. like I did last night. And one thing that I have noticed that made a huge difference in cooling, because I do not have a water-cooled computer, the big difference in cooling is taking the, the sides off of the, uh, the computer box or the housing that it's in and just removing that and leaving it off. That helps tremendously. But if you're going to do that, you probably better be blowing dust out of there regularly as well, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, for so sure. For there's sure. usually a counterpoint to any point. Yes, but I will say though, like in leaving the window open and having another cheap $40 fan blowing air on the mapping computer, it has actually had a very large effect in the time that it takes to process maps. Very interesting. Huh? Noticeable it's time. It's just not working as hard. Yeah. Well, think about it. When it gets hot, the 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 window says, okay, let's let's uh, not use as much power so we don't create as much heat. It's that simple. Yeah. So when it's hot, you're not you don't have as much power, things take longer. Mm -hmm. Um now, RAM is probably one of the most important pieces of this computer. He recommends 32 gig minimum. I th uh this is one of the few points that I would disagree respectfully disagree with Matt. 64 should be your minimum um, minimum, minimum, minimum amount of RAM that you should have. I would say if you are planning on on seriously getting into drone mapping, 
in the next two years and you don't want to have to buy a computer in two years, I would go for 128 gigs of RAM. I will say this, we just bought that mapping computer, I don't know how long ago, a year and a half, maybe two years ago. It's already out of style. Like it already needs to be beefed up significantly. And uh, so, you know, you really need to think, and, and this is where Rob comes in, the amortization schedule. How long are you going to use this product? And obviously you're paying it off, you know, either up front or over time. But my point is, is that like, you need to think about how long you're going to have this computer and then think about how many jobs it's going to take to pay it off. And then think about how much money can you create with it. And also when it comes to your RAM, try to get the highest speed RAM possible. I think that's also uh, really important. So, so, well, I'll ask this question at, at the end. Go ahead. Keep going. Oh no, it's okay. Um, uh, that's a weird alert to be getting. And it's like my phone won't stop vibrating. Oh, it's just to stay home. Yeah, 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 yeah. Through, oh, she moved it from, it was supposed to be April. Here in New Mexico, our governor, stay at home order, ended April 10th. She just extended it to April 30th. So, our so phones we just, just got a up. notice from our phones. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, and go, this is by far the most important part of your computer is the GPU, the graphics card. This is where everyone cheaps out. And this is where you should spend all your money is in the graphics card. Now, remember that Pix4D utilizes CUDA enabled um, GPUs. So AMD GPUs, um, uh, I wouldn't really recommend it. Matt says for the price, the RTX 2070, which is a NVIDIA GPU, is a great combination for good price and performance. Um, I have the 2060 in the computer that I'm literally showing you this information from, and I can map and live stream my entire screen over the internet at once, which is a lot. Uh, I was even showing Rob yesterday, I was trying to do a screen recording. It wasn't even like live streaming it somewhere, right? Just doing a screen recording while also trying to use the Matterport app and the thing failed. <laughs> it just couldn't handle it. And I was like, this is a good example of, you know, why we need switchers and why we need all these other things. But GPU, I would say this is one thing that I wish I would have changed. I wish I would have doubled up on GPUs. So, you know, I talked about how our computer is already kind of like out of style. It needs an update. There are three things that I would do. Thing number one is double the RAM Thing number two is get an additional GPU just so they act in parallel. And then I would just get more storage. So a thousand bucks and I literally like take the computer performance to a whole new level. How much RAM does it have now? What would be 64. Doubling? So you'd be going to 128. Mm -hmm. And so do you know what graphics card it is currently running? Um, it's the uh, NVIDIA 1080 Ti 11 gig, which is pretty fast. Mm. Um, at least a year or two ago, it was pretty fast. So that being said, uh, for storage, I would recommend on um, direct, literally direct solid state drives. So th this means that they're direct hard mounted to your motherboard. And again, I would recommend that uh, you get as much as possible. So uh, a note about SSDs. Um, so Matt really went into detail here. Wow. Single we got to get him to do this webinar again. Yeah, seriously. This was great. Mm -hmm. He's going into detail that I wouldn't go to. The big slow option for storage, hard disk drives. Don't do it. Just don't do it. Just don't do it. The only thing that I would say, yeah, prone to failure. Agreed. Don't do it. Um, Okay, so we talk, yeah, he really went into detail. So keep in mind that in this webinar, Matt is doing a really good job of giving people a low cost version, right? Because mm -hmm. there are people that are just breaking in and they can't afford a four, five, six, ten thousand dollar machine, obviously. And so he's giving folks those options, which is fantastic. Speaking of which, here's the option that he said with the budget mapping rig for a thousand bucks if you bucks. build it yourself, which is AMD, AMD, even with storage. He has a solid state drive. That's cool. Let's see. Let's see. Case is cheap. Where's his GPU for mid range storage? Oh, video card. There it is. Video card. Oh, okay. Let's see. Okay. So he uses a RTX 2060, what's in this computer. So everything that you see in here, I have, except it's Intel's version, and I paid 1400 bucks. 
So when you see these lap uh, these ish. these la uh, mapping laptops, yeah, ish, um, <laughs> you know, on sale, pick them up. I will say though, I want to take this computer apart and throw more RAM in it. That's the one thing I want to do. High end mapping rig. He's got it twenty six eighty seven. If you build it yourself, again, AMD um, using Nvidia uh, twenty seventy super. 8 gig gaming card. See, I would still go higher than that, but that's just me. So what if you want a laptop, right? What if you want to build a computer versus buy a computer? Um, well, Matt recommends I buy power. He really likes them. Uh, and then he put Puget Systems in here. Puget Systems is well known in the PIX40 community for doing all the benchmark testing for how fast computers work on PIX. And then he compared what you can buy versus how much it would cost you to build, and I'm going to flip our position on the switcher really fast. So you can see that if you build a computer, you can save almost $1,500, which is which is considerable. Mm -hmm. So I have to say this, this provides a lot of clarity in what you can buy versus what you can build, AMD versus Intel, and understanding, you know, what options there are. Uh, there is one little uh, caveat in here that I, I just really disagreed with Matt on. And, but, it, you know, we're all different, which is he recommends if you really just need to get an all-in-one computer, if you have a drone business, as he says, just buy the MacBook 16-inch, uh, the MacBook Pro 16-inch and deck it out. And then he was saying that you can run um, Pix4D in Parallels or Boot Camp and... I will just say I do not recommend that to people and I don't recommend it because it's so much more of a headache to work with, in my opinion. And in also in my opinion, and this is something that I wanted to bring up during the webinar, but I had already boogied at that point, which is, you know, he makes a great point. If you need an all-in-one computer to do media, to edit images, to make videos, and to map, then yeah, go ahead and get the MacBook Pro 16 inch. I could not disagree more with that because whenever, I, like, have you ever seen me really using the mapping computer at any other time than like directly telling the computer what to do? Because that thing is constantly spinning, just working at 100% for hours and if not days on end. So I give this example. The last uh, mapping project that I did for the city of Denver, right? 3,800 images, 39 hours on the computer cleaning it up. Now, how many hours did it spend spinning its wheels, processing the map, and making it happen. I know on one weekend, it took the entire weekend just to re-optimize. Probably a good 60, 80 hours, I would guess. And that 60, 80 hours of opportunity cost that I lost by not being able to use my computer. Because if I have a MacBook Pro 16-inch and it's processing um, mapping data in the background on boot camp, well, guess what? I am not doing anything else on that computer. Yeah, so you're... No, I mean, I think that all makes sense. I, I would love to have you and Matt actually debate. He's obviously not here to kind of tell his side of the story. I, one thing I'll say is that Matt is a very accomplished um, IT person, for yeah, lack of a better a way to say it. He's a software developer, yeah. He's a software developer. He's been building computers since he was a teenager. And so I guess when it comes to the complexities or the idiosyncrasies or the frustrations even with trying to do what he's talking about with the MacBook and running boot camp and so forth. He's got such a good understanding of it. He's going to be able to manage that probably better than most. He's ultimately talking about his personal preference and saying it does work. I think what you're saying is, while I can see how it does work, I just cannot get on board with it being the optimal solution by it, far. It's not practical for anyone who owns a drone business. If, but I don't think that Matt is necessarily, well, I don't necessarily, yeah, I, he's not here to defend himself. He's not, and, and so it's not fair, me versus you. <laughs> so yeah, let's just stop. <laughs> but uh, uh, I think I was just insulted by that last comment. <laughs> um, if we weren't on camera. No. 
<laughs> Maybe, but not intentionally. No, my point is this, is like Matt is a software developer. His part-time gig is flying drones. He's had a successful business doing it. He has brought in revenue. But I'm talking people who are not part-time, people who of are course. full-time. And I think he would probably agree with that. Yeah, so that's why I'm like, eh, it, it, like for me, you have to have a mapping computer that is just for mapping. It really all comes down to where are you at in your business? What are your goals? Are, are you doing a part-time? Are you doing a full-time? I think if nothing else, this just gives us the, uh, the very clear picture of it depends on you, right? And where you're at and your understanding of computing. And do you have any confidence at all to go build your own? Or do you spend fifteen two thousand dollars $2,000 on a, a nice gaming computer that's going to do a lot for you? There's so many variables. There really are. And I feel like this is a great opportunity to mention this. But I feel like whenever people ask me these questions in person, you know, it's like, ah, mm, you bring up a very good point and you bring up a lot of questions. In science, though, we would always say the answer depends, depends. <laughs> on variables. But here on the show, we can just go, you know, down the rabbit hole. So <laughs> absolutely. But absolutely. anyway, um, but sure. Rob, I do appreciate you uh, trying to defend or not trying. I appreciate you defending Matt, and um, I am not trying to <laughs> yeah. insult you. So, no, but no, no, I, I know just made it worse. <laughs> so there's that. <laughs> Moving along. Okay. <laughs> so Classic we... Paul screwing it up more. <laughs> did we? <laughs> <laughs> did we answer Scott's question? I would imagine there's a lot in there that uh, that would answer Scott's question. And keep an eye out for another webinar by Matt as well, where I, uh, he'll really go into that. I mean, I think if he's watching on YouTube. The slideshow that we showed uh, for this podcast will definitely answer his question. Yeah. If he's trying to bootstrap his business, what type of computer? But I think we also talked about some really important points, which is as a practical drone business owner yeah. who's trying to do this at scale, what does it look like? Because I don't want to give people information that's like, oh, yeah, go use a MacBook Pro. It's like, hold on a minute. I totally well, understand. Like, who is that for? You I, know? Yes, absolutely. I completely so. understand that. And again, I think Matt would probably agree with that. But um, if nothing else, Scott, what you've got here is a list of if you don't want to build, if you don't want to have one built because of the cost, you at least know what specs to look for in something that you can buy at Best Buy or whatever. True. In right. fact, I was just looking at Best Buy. Which is where we got this sucker. That is actually true as well. So, wow, there's some gaming laptops that are pretty expensive. Holy cow. 60. Wow. Wow. But for $28.99, see, that's... Uh, well, Matt is right that at least when you buy an Apple for three grand, you get a whole lot more than what you're getting with Windows. But that's only recently, in all fairness. So... Josh built a pretty snazzy mapping laptop as well. I thought he bought it. Well, he had it built. Ah, okay. He had it built. Okay. And, but I don't know what all the specs were, but I think it was five, six grand. That's right. It was, huh? Mm -hmm. That thing also rips faster than the, the monster mapping machine. And to yeah. give Josh true props, yes, it benchmarks way faster than our beast machine. And, you know. Which is saying a lot. It is. And Josh likes those little digs. He's like, ah, I gotcha. So, <laughs> <laughs> you win, Josh. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's going to do it for us today. Hope you found this information useful. If you did, leave us a review, share the show with someone. And if you know someone who is trying to work on their business, learn more about how they can better themselves as drone pilots to be more competitive in the market, then let them know about our upcoming webinars or to become a member. That is going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. And this went way too long. This is Ask Drone You. <laughs> <laughs>